Good day and welcome to the Alphatron Signal Management Part 1 training. My name is Warren. My name is Donovan. And today we're going to go through most of the equipment that you could use in small to medium and possibly larger meeting spaces as well as auditoriums and lecture halls. So we're going to begin with scaling equipment, but before we do that, once again I'd like to apologize for the webinar being a little bit late and it seems that it may have cut into our Q&A time. So what we're going to do is we have colleagues on the side that will answer the the questions and whatnot that you have on the side, I think it's to the right of it. So we're going to move on now to our scaling equipment. Right, so the Alphatron SCU61E is one of the best sellers of our range, strictly because it's a great fit for most boardroom requirements, regardless of the size of the room. The unit comprises of three HDMI inputs, a USB-C input, a DisplayPort input, as well as a VGA input for legacy source devices. The unit is IPIR RS232 controllable, supports consumer electronics control, which is referred to as CEC. Yes. So you can control that by HDMI cable to HDMI displays, mainly for on-off, no real other control. Absolutely, yes. On that, yeah. So it's the unit supports 18 gigabits per second HDMI bandwidth, the HDR10, which is compatible with four higher contrast ratios and is also HDCP2 compliant, yes. 2.3 compliant. 2 .3, sorry, yes. yeah. So yeah, the SCU61E, a fantastic all-round auto switcher scaler that suits most of all AV distribution applications. Yes. So as an example, you could have a couple of guys, multiple users with different source devices all around the table. Yeah, you know, like guys that use uh, still like legacy VGA from the laptops that I want to yes. get rid of. So all connected to the same box. Um, whoever connects last will then take over the presentation, audio and video. Yes. It automatically switches between them. Yes, it does. And um, yeah, it's got audio DM media. Um, you, as soon as you remove the cable, obviously the last connected device will then be, will be displayed. Displayed, take yes. over the presentation. Exactly, yes. Sure. Uh, so pretty much what we're going to do is we'll just sum up on that. And it's one unit to get, take care of all your switching, scaling, signal distribution automatically. Of course, you can yeah. remove it from auto switching, but it just it makes it a little bit more difficult, of course. So well, now we're going to move on, of course, to our 514 KTS. Yes, that's Great our next device. Equipment. The number, model number sort of explains the capability of the device. So for exam, example, in this um, mm -hmm. particular case on the model, it says SC, which would refer to scaling, SC. And then 51 is inputs and outputs. So five inputs, one so output. One output, yeah. yeah. On this particular model, you'll see there's dual outputs, but it's still outputting the same sing single signal. Yes. So yeah, that's why it's one. Both outputs from the HDMI as 100%. well as HDBSD. So, yes, yes, one is HDMI. We'd like to call it local monitoring and then HD base C, which is. I don't know, far end or maybe a project in the ceiling or something. Yeah, I mean, it depends. If it's like 230 feet away or 70 meters, you know, yeah. then you can push it through from the HD based port yeah. on this, this guy. You wouldn't have to run through another bail and set. Yes, which yeah, makes it so much more complicated. HD based out. Yeah, there, there's obviously. more points of failure within the chain then, essentially. 100%. Yeah. Then you just have your receiver to worry about mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Pretty much, yeah. So there's HDMI output as well as HD base T as mentioned. Uh, HD base T will power up the included receiver at the display up to 70 meters, 230 feet, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, over a single cat cable. So it's POH, so which powers the HD base T uh, across. And the unit also allows multi view, which is pretty unique, I think. So, and, and so, this you could all yeah. set up with presets. Sure. I mean, because seeing as though the unit itself also comprises of like two HDMI inputs, an HDMI or display port input and an HDMI or USB-C. So what that essentially means is you've got your two HDMI inputs, then you've got a third one, but it can be detected either between the HDMI or the, the display port. You have to choose one or the other. You can't use both at the same time. Yeah. And like I've just mentioned, you should really note that if you use the third HDMI input, if it's going to be used, the display port will not be functional and vice versa, of course. And this avoids like, you know, having converters in the signal chain, which could degrade the signal, like we just touched on a moment ago. More points of failure, yeah. essentially. You know, um, uh, there is an HDMI output, as Donovan did mention, as well as an HD base T, like we just touched on for a local, pretty much, and then you can have a far end, 230 feet and 70 meters. Sure. You know, additionally, the unit is also controllable, like via the front panel buttons, the IR remote control, RS-232, as well as a web-based GUI, and support CEC on top of it. 
you know, which is a nice little addition, especially for a local, like a Samsung monitor and things like that. You know, we've experienced a lot of guys use that sort of thing, especially CEC and boardroom applications yeah. and stuff like that. As soon as you have presentation connected, it'll just switch on the it monitor. Switches on and off it goes. You know, it's less things for the people actually giving the presentation to worry about. Yeah, and, and that's what you want. around for remote control, trying to get everything happening. Yes, yeah. plug, play, off you go. 100%. Like, you know, um. Yeah, I think we've touched on all of that. Uh, so, the default IP address is something that we have forgotten yeah, those, for the web-based uh, GUI, of course. Yeah. If the IP address itself is actually beneath the scaler, right? So if you have a look there, by the um, serial number and so on, it'll give you, it's a 192.168.0.178, I think is the, the default. You can, of course, change that up in the, the web-based GUI and so on. Um, yeah, uh, volume control, we have neglected to mention about the audio. Yes, so on the audio side, obviously, mm. it's got a preamplifier volume control, so you could intenuate whatever audio send it, sending into it. Um, it has audio mic line input with 48 volts power supply, selectable, Phantom. you can switch it on and off, yeah. 100%, and additional line input as well. So you could also mix that audio alongside your HDMI output or HD base C, whatever yeah, the case might be. Whichever one you've decided to actually utilize. 100%. So yeah. in summary, a five input single output split by HDMI and HD base T, mm -hmm. seamless switching between inputs and multiple control options, as mentioned, including a web based GUI. Yeah. It's a signal. So, it's just simplify the signal distribution. 100%, essentially. Yeah. yeah. We're going to move on to our SCU 91 now. That's the fellow over there that uh, Donovan's going to pick yeah. up and showcase. We've only got a few so, units over here. Of course, you can see everything on the presentation. 100% rack mountable, one new rack. Yeah. And mount. then it goes. Um, this is the little knob on the previous one we were discussing on to attenuate yeah. the volume on the fly. Yes. Yeah, um, for the 51 4K TS. 100%. Mm. And all the push buttons in front. And there's all your. The back end as well. Goodies. So, yeah. Yeah, we've got quite a lot to discuss about this guy. 100%. Uh, so always when I look at a box, I never even really worry about the front. I will just get to the back. Yeah, you have a look over there <laughs> and you see what can I do with this fella. 100%. Um, so the last product that we will be showcasing under our scaling equipment, of course, is the SCU91 that we've just touched on. It's a nine input switcher scaler ranging from HDMI to legacy VGA and supports HDMI and HD base T output simultaneously just like the previous product we mentioned, 100%. the 51 So same TS. signal, whichever you select, will be outputted on both HDMI Absolutely. and HDSD. Yeah. It is a single output of that signal that goes through via yeah. two channels, essentially. So this, I think, um, is much like the SCU61. In terms of the back panel, yes. Connectivity, yes. yes. Absolutely. But it has additional inputs, as you mm. can see. So we've got the multiple HDMIs, as well as the legacy VGAs, yes. alongside with the audio. We've got our HD base T input. We've got a display port input yeah, as well. Which yeah, is so quite good. So if you have, I have a far end input as such, um, I like to think if I can make an example, maybe in a house of worship, we have a pulpit um, right next to the lectern, for instance, you have an HDMI input and that gets sent via HD base T back. You just go straight into this. There's yet to get out another box you have to go through before. Which makes perfect sense. Goes into the input. So, and you've, yeah, we've got to think about the end user. Again, I mean, like that example that you've just posed now with a sure. pulpit and so on. You don't exactly want whoever is presenting or whether they are, you know, whatever they're conducting from that space. You don't want them to struggle with any of the cables and stuff. You want a single input. And that's where this is great because you can 100%. plug it straight in. It goes off through into the control room and that guy processes and does everything that needs to be displayed on the yeah. display. You have actually a wall plate. That's going to fit in very well there. So later on, we'll touch on that, but that's pretty cool. Yeah. Perfect. Now so in summary, this unit has an HD base the input, a display port input. It's got five HDMI and two VGA inputs. It's simultaneously the outputs, the HDMI and HD base T, and the receiver is included so that you can connect the very display at yeah. 70 meters to 200 or 230 feet away. Now we're going to be moving on through to our switching equipment. This is our switching equipment. Right, WUK3A. There we go, the WUK3A, nice little box. Uh, we unfortunately didn't have, we have we've got an yeah. SUK4, but- we'll, we'll touch on that, yeah, we'll, we'll move on well. to this guy following. So it's a three input, one output auto switch as well, very important. It um, searches for sources sequentially. Right, oh, did I yes. say that right? Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> you did. Sequentially for sources and then the device starts, it'll start search at searching at HDMI one, then two, then three. Yes. So if you are connected to HDMI three, it's first going to go to two and then two, yeah one two screen. and then we'll see on three so, and yeah, then start that's how all that magic is happening mm -hmm. wherever the input is it'll obviously stop and then display whatever you're presenting 
afternoon. Uh, the unit also comes with a remote and is powered over HDMI, so there's no need for additional power supplies, which I think is really great if you. If you yeah, think sometimes about guys it, get yeah? stuck if they run a cable and then they stop in the middle of nowhere, kind yeah. of thing. If I will, or in the ceiling, for instance, and they sure. need to go to multiple displays over there. You don't Limited necessarily space. have power yeah. in you, the you've ceiling. You've got no so. power point that you can actually plug into, and we know that a lot of these adapters they're fairly large. So, I mean, if you've got that little gap in the ceiling, how are you even going to get that in to power this device? Yeah, sure. That's where the, this comes in, which is really great. No, and on top of it, you know, the unit supports 4K with HCCP 2.2 with EDID management. So, you can also turn off the auto switching of it? Yes, There's a can. button in front that you just hold for uh, three yeah, seconds. Yeah, auto forward slash three yeah. seconds, that one. So, if you want the manual control over it or just the use of the remote control without having it to detect sources, if somebody else connected you and you're still busy with this presentation, you don't necessarily want to go to the next input as such um you can remove that as well input three cool, thank I you very much 100 yeah. percent. Mm. so yeah just holding the button for three seconds like i said that'll switch between either manual or auto, or auto. switching so yeah. yeah yeah that's pretty much it small little wonderful device box, 100%. Mm. So, yeah there's the issue uh, we're working on the wuk 4a yeah. now and of course as donovan mentioned of course with our products the, the 4a will let you know that it's a four input one output essentially automatic switcher with physical edid management via the dip switch right here on the back panel essentially uh, this unit's also 4k capable with audio d embedding rs232 and ir control mm -hmm. rs232 and ir control rs232 on a 3.5 jack yeah and you also have your Easy. edit management via the dip switches yeah. in the manual you'll find the table that goes whatever frame rate you want to be using, so whatever render, 60 render, or resolution whatnot. you want to pause. Mm. Yeah. So I mean, it all depends. You're gonna to have to have a look at the way. manual, of course, with those four dip switches over there. Yeah. I mean, this unit is really perfect for small boardrooms and huddle spaces because if nice we have a look. Fit. Sure. I mean, as Donovan mentioned not a moment ago, I mean this is a, a one U rack unit. Um comparatively. Yeah, this is perfect for huddle spaces. Yeah, obviously, it doesn't have all the inputs and scaling and everything Naturally happening not, in it. No. But yeah, if you're underneath a table or something of the sort, you know, plugs in there. Right up there. Yeah, Done. so if it's out of the way, if there's there's no cables or anything like that for people to catch their legs on and pull it out and all that sort of stuff. Comes through the pop up and that's the end of it. Done. Mm. Lovely. Cool. There's a wall plate. I love this device. Oh. <laughs> he does. He really does. <laughs> I use this pretty much everywhere. So this is what it looks like uh, for Google. For you gang box um hdmi vga uh, with audio following the audio as yes, well yeah, again you've VGA. got your source automatic detection so yeah. if you don't necessarily want to buy the rs232 to, to control it you can switch that off sure. uh please do show i guess the rs232 is on the back on the back of well. yes 100 yeah. percent so what's happening here whatever your input it auto switches to that if you prefer that and then it scales it or then converts it via HD base T as well. So you go directly via cat cable. So what I was mentioning with the house of worship. Oh yes, yes. This little course, box on the in pulpit front, side. Done. Mm. That's all you need. Plug that in. I mean, this is this is fairly discreet. If you have a look and it disappears into the pulpit, if we have a look from that side over there, mm. I mean that's only that there. Cable plug straight in. Everything There's is, no bother. Everything else is hidden away. And it's and it's just simple. one single cable you have to pull from front of house all the way to the back control room where this guy, for instance, sit. And you could run that input. Yeah straight into the hd based here output so and then of literally course it's right one in the back. cable mm. for and off you go far end input yeah. if you will i yeah. mean what that's 230 feet 70 meters that it pushes it yes which is i mean 100%. that's that's quite a distance now, another great thing about this unit is that it can be powered from the receiver yes. so it takes away the need for a power supply in tight space just as we mentioned with the pulpit and so on and the auto switching can also be switched off via the front button yes, if required. Yeah. Oh, you did mention, did that, mention actually. that, yes, 100%. So I'm having a look at that picture again. So we, also, reminding me there. <laughs> so we also have LED indications as to what input you are on. Sure. If you're having yeah. trouble getting feed at the other end, you can see what it is switched yes. to currently. And then Pretty much which one it's going to take you from. If you're on manual mode, you'll just press the button, it'll jump. Yeah, the little green LED lights up and let you know yeah, which one you're yeah. in, which is great. Awesome. So let's uh, move along then to our boosters and HDCP. Okay. Yeah, a little something else. Yeah, indeed. Let's move that guy along over there. We'll chat about those two fellas. Okay, so the first one up is the Alphatron B20K booster. Now, this little booster right, is ideal for extending HDMI signal where your display is just beyond the HDMI capability. Look at that. It's like it's smaller tiny. than a zipper. It, it is. It's smaller than a zipper. Yeah. I mean, it, <laughs> it's tiny. Use it there, but... Well, no, there's no HDMI cables there, <laughs> yeah. but sure, you know. You know what's great about this guy as well? Just like with the TP HD, you sure. don't have to worry about power for this. Power well, over HDMI. Yeah, it's power over HDMI. It's pretty simple. It's in and it's out. 
what's great is for 4K transmission, you can have up to 35 meters on the input and you can have a maximum of 50 meters additional on the output, which is fantastic for this little device. Wow. Yeah, and that's it. That's pretty much it. Small little device yeah. just to extend your HDMI if it's just beyond the reach. And you can't necessarily use a Balin set or extender or whatever the case sure. might be. Yeah, because I mean, so, it may not be that far away. You know, you're not looking at pushing. Like, maybe say, want another or five meters, meters or something. Yeah, just additional yeah. little bit. You pop that guy in there and off it goes. But yeah, yeah. you can go another, what, 115 feet or something. Yeah, well, I mean, that's on the, the 4K distribution yes. itself. That's on the input side. It can take up to 35 meters and, yeah. you know, and then extend it with foot. another 49. 49 feet. 49 feet, yeah, which is an additional 15 meters on top of it. Yeah. I mean, for that little device. <laughs> I, I refer to this as the get out of jail free card. So I do think I you think have a point there, much, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that pretty much explains it. Let's move on to this fellow over here. So the B20K booster and then... And then it's the CV2.0K 1.4. That's it. So this the is HDMI the... signal management. This, yeah. this is designed to enhance... Comp compatibility between HDMI sources and displays to match more display devices. So, you know, you get stuck sometimes with some edit yeah, management, absolutely. Got legacy devices or something, and especially it's with all the displays, you know, some resolution that you're pushing out. Yeah, and for this instance, just it wants 50, you know, uh, out, hertz yeah. as opposed to 60 kind of thing. And then this would then push it through. I mean, so, well, straight, besides the straight through HDMI transmission, the EDID bars, uh, bypass function ensures that the best resolution of displays, there's no need for an external power supply in this guy either, like the B20K. It simplifies for the installation and the operation because it gets its power, once again, from HDMI. Pretty helpful, yeah. So, legacy, legacy devices, the unit auto detects the best uh, resolution between the two and the device will just accept and output accordingly. Yeah. Pretty much, much yeah. yeah. You won't even notice this, also small. Yeah. I think this is about the size of a zipper. Almost, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you compare the two, right? Yeah. <laughs> right, right, so let's move on to our Twisted Pair Cat extenders. I, I mean, we touched so on this. Sure, I mean, we just touched on that a moment ago when we were chatting about it when we were busy with yeah. the B20K, you know, that's for this. But now if you have to push it a little bit further, we've got something else for you. This is called the EXT60IR18G. Right, it's a cost-effective point-to-point HDMI over CAT extender set for HDMI 2.0 and IR signals. This kit supports 4K UHD video at 60 hertz with 444 chroma sampling, as well as HDMI data rates of up to 18 gigabits per second, HDCP 2.2 compliant, and HDR. That's it. And um, it provides HDMI transmission, nice. transmission up to 230 feet. 70 meters. 70 yeah. meters, that's it. That's for 4K at 60 hertz, 444. Yeah. And uh, 108 OP. Yes. So that's over single swag, single twisted pair CAT6 cable. It supports video resolutions, downscaling. The 4K input can be automatically downscaled up to 108 OP, uh, output for compatibility with 108 OP displays. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is a great, great cost, cost effective, effective little unit. 100%. Small applications such as source to display. Obviously, yeah. you don't want to be running through. A lot of things but if you get stuck for instance let's say you have a display or a table or connection or something and you don't need all other maybe let's call it hd based t with its full compatibility you just literally want to convert to cat to get through a conduit back to the other side um yeah this that's is your it. guy essentially. that's what you use 100 percent. something that we should also mention about this okay that of course is the, the receiver over there the transmitter itself has actually got a display out here as well so you can plug local, your source yeah. in you've got a local display through so you can run the cat through to the far end you can have a look at your display right here and see that you are actually outputting something onto the far end that you can't see from there yes I mean, again if you're not being or you're not able to see the sure, other if it's display, 70 meters away you know, it's, then you can actually see whether you are receiving a signal and sort of troubleshoot from there from if there. it's the case yeah sure you know is it the cable or whatever the case may be yeah. the port or whatever it is yeah, pretty much. Cool, yeah. That's about it. That's, yeah, for the ext 60 rs 18G is a nice little piece of equipment that. Yeah. Let's move on to the TPUKs. Which is a more a step up, a level up, if you will. Absolutely. Uh, more yeah. robust, nice, hard iron case. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, metal casing. Metal That's casing, I mean, it's, it's not the, the, uh, the plastic casing of those guys. Mm. That's the thing, robust. yeah. So yeah. some of the guys like to drop things, huh? drop tests. <laughs> Absolutely, drop test, right? Yeah. I, I know a few technicians that call it that, right? <laughs> Integrators. I think that's more than the, the excuse than anything else. Hmm? No, I needed to see if it was robust. I think we've is. had too many they issues with that. that. Yeah, yeah, they can do that, especially <laughs> the metal ones, right? We don't recommend it, but yeah, feel free. <laughs> 
The nice thing about this guy is that it also adopts the visual lossless video compression technology known as VLC to ensure that the HD lossless transmission of HDR and 4K at 60 hz 444 over CAT 5E or CAT 6A cable. I mean, this guy also supports the HDMI 2.0 with, H with the CP 2.2 and he's backward compatible with the previous versions. I mean, the maximum transmission distance is up to 40 meters for 4K and 70 meters for 1080p. Yeah, so I mean, and, feet again. yeah. And yeah, as you've mentioned, feet. I mean, it's pretty robust. We don't have one of those to show or at the moment. We've got another unit, which is pretty much the same from that metal casing. We'll do a drop test just now, won't we? Yes. <laughs> After we've stopped. <laughs> naturally, naturally. <laughs> Ah, and cool. it's just come up now. I mean, this is That's the, the receiver side of it. This is the receiver side. Yeah, this is the TPPHD 70 RSRX. Right, this is that uh, nice metal casing. We'll do the drop test just now. Right, <laughs> it's a mini sized HD BASD receiver. I mean, with HD BASD technology, is used to transmit the high resolution 1080p or 4K signal from the transmitter to the receiver via CAT6 cable. To run to over there uh, at a distance once again of you know 70 to 40 meters of course 70 meters being for 1080p and then 40 for 4k and moreover the tp bhd 70 rs rx supports cec which is great of course once again bi-directional rs232 and ir control and it has poh which is power over hd base t function on top of it yeah so if you were going to go let's say out of the hd base t output of this guy yeah the su91 yeah 91 and you have that one at the other end, you do not need to power that because that will be sent via the cable. Absolutely. 100%. Power of HD one thing I think we forgot to mention, yeah, also uh, you are able to send the RS-232 control commands. Bi-directional, yeah. By, yeah, yeah. By, well, I, you, you did mention that, 100%. So, and then you just output it from, from there. the RS-232 over there, it. which is just a little Phoenix block. And into and your you device, go. projector, yeah. screen, whatever it might be. Depending, I mean, there's a lot of projectors as well that uh, would accept, you know, yeah. or would send out signal and stuff like that. It all depends on the application. You must yeah. make sure what other equipment you're working with. So you with. can use these with our matrix switches, which will be coming up in part two. And yes, you can do, yes. use this with our wall plates once again, um, if you don't have yeah. a straight HD base C input. Some projectors have HD base C input already, and you can just go straight into that. Yeah, you can run that. it straight from the 405. So the 405, our matrix switches, the 4x4s, 8x8 TPs, and yeah, the SUH4T as well. Ah, which yes, we'll which we'll also... discuss. Yes, we'll discuss it. I think yeah. that would be in part two or so on. Probably part two, yes. So these are the devices just to sort of keep in the back of your mind. Okay, so we're going to, oh, we're going to move on to the transmitter. And I mean, that's just the receiver. So yes, I, uh, pretty much the same yeah. thing. This is the receiver. Transmitter looks exactly the same. Obviously, input just, output is yeah. swapped between HD base T and HDMI. Certainly. Same thing. There is where you would put your RS-232 control commands in it, and it will send it. This will receive it. Um, but you can buy that separately. Like, for instance, yeah, now another example is like on I the said, 91 once again. Sure. Yeah, on the 99. This, this is what makes this box so beautiful. Everything else integrates with it very well. Yes, so you could really transmit does. from there straight into this. And you've got another input once again from the pulpit. So, I mean, that would yep. then run from yeah, there. If you didn't have the that. wall plates and you needed to send another HDMI source from it, you could just use that straight, straight yes. into this. HDMI into the transmitter, transmitter into the SEU 91, yeah. and off you go. So, they are sold separately. Point being, if you only need a transmitter, you can do that. If you only need a receiver, then you can do they that. They are available yeah. for separately. Sure, because yeah. I mean, the receiver comes with the SEU 91. Why anyway. would you need the, the transmitter? You know? yeah. And then if you've got that, then at least you can purchase it separately. Yes. Uh, and again, uh, this can be sent 230 feet or 70 meters over a single twisted cat pair, just like with most of our you know, transmitters and receivers. Receivers, that's it. Pretty yeah. much. We're going to move on to our splitters and you know, or distribution amplifiers, depends on yeah, how you want to Yeah, some guys like splitters, yeah, some, some use say, distribution amplifier. Yeah. I think the correct terminology is distribution amplifier. It yeah, especially when the guys walk around and say, what DAs have you got? DA? <laughs> <laughs> so this is the last section that we'll be covering today. And this is what we refer to, as we were just joking about now, either splitters or distribution amplifiers. Now, we don't have the SUK2. We've got the SUK4, which we'll showcase in a moment. It's the mm -hmm. same thing. One is it just is. four. And the other one's just two. Essentially, yeah. yes, you're 100% right. I mean, it's it's an HDMI uh, splitter featuring the capability to repeat HDMI or DVI source to two displays synchronously. So the compliance with HDMI 2.0 and HTCP 2.2, the ALF SUK2 provides comprehensive resolution capabilities up to 4K 1080p 3D. Yes, and uh, it's capable of automatically recognizing the resolution and HDCP compliance status of the input signal. The input signal is automatically equalized for reliable transmission with proper EDIT management. Mm -hmm. Moreover, 
the SUK2 supports convenient online update through the USB port. Which oh, it's find sitting right the down the there. front panel. Yeah. It, What's great is, I mean, it's also got the, the EDID little dip switch right here in the front. You know, so once you've mounted it, it's on you can play as you need to. Obviously, I think actually. But it, this is the great thing about the yeah. SUK4. I mean, uh, if you have a look, uh, you have your EDID settings that are put right on the device. So that itself. explains your dip switches and what Straight. they do, basically. Yes, I mean, if, if we just have yeah, a look really. at like the first one for priority out, you know, it tells you exactly where you need to put what that dip switch. switch does what you know, is it one or zero, essentially? Is it a binary, like, you know? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. So, great for distribution, one source to multiple displays via HDMI, perfect for reception areas, I think. So let's say Certainly. you... So got a display up, maybe have a bit of information around your company mm -hmm. or something like that, and you and want then, to place this all around. Yeah, It's perfect, because, I mean, you've got your input that, that runs through from there. Yeah. And I like that you touch on the reception area. I mean, if you have a look at most reception areas when you walk into a rather a larger building, yeah. right, or a bigger, like, let's say, Fortune 500 company or however you want to place it, you know, yeah. you have a look and you, you approach reception and so on, and they've got one thing that's displayed over there. Then you notice that that exact same thing is there where you would be seated or where the coffee area is or whatever yeah. that is. That's most likely this guy sitting right there yeah. because it's got the one input, the four outputs that will go through to the four Just different screens signal. in your reception area, and off you go. Yeah. Again, mm. nice, yeah. sleek, slim line, multiple Perfect functions and away, features, you know? and yeah. Not an eyesore. This is very important. Yes. Very important. And cool. uh, yeah, I think that is that for our part presentation. One. Yeah, part for, one. for part so, one. Part two, um, I'm sure, was in, was in a week or two. Uh, we'll have to make sure about that, of course. Uh, well, yeah, I don't know if there's been any Q and A and stuff like that. Unfortunately, we've just been blabbing on you, of course. Uh, I don't know if the guys have helped in the in the back there. Let's, uh, let's have a so, look. So yeah, there. also maybe an important um, thing to mention is a lot of these products that we're touching on, playing on, and not all of them is there yet, but we're getting there. Certainly. Um, the, we've got a YouTube channel, which is great. Yes, um, yes, well, indeed. So That's helped a lot, especially with like uh, the AV over IP stuff. Uh, of course, you can just go and have a look on the, the YouTube channel, then you would see that sort of thing. You'd have a look that we've got that yes, under so there. Basically, what we're doing here, we're also creating a video and then explains the functionality, everything in short, yes. obviously without our blabbering. Um, <laughs> Naturally, you know. It'll just you know, show you exactly what to do, what the capabilities are, and how you do it, actually. Indeed, because so, it makes it so much more simpler for the poor integrator that's sitting on the floor. Yes. You know, this is the guy that's got to now try and figure out. So you've had the salesman who has everything, and now the integrator's got to sit there and go, how does this work? Mm. I'll tell you what, man, go have a look at our YouTube channel. We've got a whole bunch of videos explaining it there for you to make it so much simpler so you can get yeah, through your installation I've had cases quicker. where the guys wanted me to come and demo stock, and some of the yeah. things like the AV up, I, 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 IP stuff. Yeah. It's difficult to go and demo because you need displays and you sure, need cables. I mean, like and... three or four displays that you can actually show sure, what it's capable to get behind of. it. So that yeah. will literally help you just send this to the guys and whether they need to know how to install it, how to work it, how to configure it, sure, or what it does, all of it's in there. So Absolutely. That's one of it. We've got some great cameras and stuff that's also coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely worth a watch. I, yeah, I we discussed quite a bit of, uh, of our equipment actually on sure. YouTube as well. Uh, what we're neglecting to mention is, of course, our website, alphatronelectronics.com. You can go and have a look there. We are based in the US. We are based in Europe. We are based in Australia. And we are also based here in South Africa. We pretty much wherever you are, I yeah. think. <laughs> and we will help you out however we can. Yes, 100%. There's also a tab there. If you've got any questions, you will need to ask on the fly. Certainly. Yeah. Um, somebody's always watching yeah our technical Again. staff is actually yeah they're online they're online perfect All right so, so uh, i think that's pretty much it for us today yeah, um, um i just want to have a check there in the back do we have any questions or anything like that all good it's all good 100%. So, yeah, I think we'll be covering think, part two probably again. Yes, yeah, we will. Um, we get we'll to see keep the, you posted. The nice again, all the yeah. upcoming webinars, upcoming training, everything else is on our website. So, yeah, please feel free to yeah. visit our electronics.com. Um, yeah, get yeah. in touch with us and uh, hopefully we'll be able to help. Thank you very much for joining us. Great stuff. Have a good day.